If you haven't had much success getting your grant funded at the NIH, chances are you are making at least one of the three most common mistakes that I see in my work with my clients and my students. And in this video, we're going to talk about what those three mistakes are and how you can solve them. I'm Sarah Dobson. I'm a grant writing expert and I help early career researchers write show-stopping, outstanding grants to the NIH so that they can get their research funded and make a huge impact in their careers. All right, so in today's video, we are talking about the three mistakes that I see most often that really kill your chances of getting your grant funded. So those three mistakes that I see most often are you're not giving yourself enough time, you're not getting enough feedback on your application, and you're not thinking enough about your reviewers. So let's talk about each of those step by step. So number one, you're not giving yourself enough time. I mean, this one is really, really common. Uh, it is, um, it's really an issue of planning, right? You need to give yourself enough time to write a really strong and persuasive grant application, and that takes time which means that you really have to build it into your schedule. And if you go back and watch some of the planning videos that I've done, it will help you uh, lay out that plan for yourself. But bottom line is you need to give yourself months, not weeks, to write a good application. And part of that relates to mistake number two, which is not getting enough feedback on your application. And what I see most often is either applicants who are getting feedback at the very beginning, kind of at the conceptual level when they're just getting their ideas down on paper, and then they don't really get much feedback after that, or applicants who wait until the very end, until they have what they consider to be a near perfect draft, and then they get feedback, at which point it might be too late to make any changes. So what you really want to do is uh, build in feedback throughout the grant writing process, which of course means that you need enough time to be able to do that. So those two mistakes are really common and they kind of get lumped together. The third mistake that I see is that you're not really thinking enough about your reviewers. And this one is really easy to miss because a lot of people assume that when you're writing a grant application, you really need to be focused on the research idea and the study design and the approaches and methods. And yes, of course, that is very important to a successful application, but you also need to provide context for uh, your study idea and design and approaches and methods, but you also need to make it as easy as possible for your reviewers to to find that information and to be able to score you well on your application. And that's the piece that a lot of people miss is they don't make those connections for reviewers. Uh, things get buried in the application and reviewers have to hunt for them and they end up making assumptions about your application that you don't want them to make. So the solution to that is, first of all, to get really clear on what those scoring criteria are and then make sure that you are presenting them as clearly and easily as possible for your reviewers to, to grasp and find and understand. So those are the three main mistakes that I see most often. You're not giving yourself enough time, you're not getting enough feedback, and you're not thinking enough about your reviewers. And if you can tackle at least one of those in your next grant application, you are going to be in much, much, much better shape. So let me know in the comments which one of those mistakes are you making and which one are you going to tackle in your next application. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.